Senate. But of course, the House still has to work with them in order to get legislation put on the president's desk to be signed into law. So on this now, the future of what is now known as Build Back Better, whether this moves into smaller pieces uh, that could be passed individually, or perhaps Build Back Better is revamped to Joe Manchin's liking, uh, it would then, of course, have to swing back to the House to get approval. How do you work with that? Would you be willing, would you and the others in your caucus be willing to work with those kind of bills? How much more are you willing to compromise? Well, you know, I think the first thing to say is that this idea that we're going to refit it to Joe Manchin's liking. The bill has already been retrofitted to Joe Manchin's liking. Let's make that extremely clear. The climate uh, ambitions have been reduced because of Joe Manchin. We have had, for example, uh, the, the minimization of Medicare expansion. Much of that is also thanks to Joe Biden. Uh, Joe, <laughs> much of that is thanks to Joe Manchin. Um, and we need to really make it very clear that this bill, this framework, was signed off by Joe Manchin. And so this is a Joe Manchin Build Back Better Act. And so this idea that we're going to go back to the table and give him the pen again for a bill that he has already have, has his ink all over makes very little sense. So. I think that in terms of that road, we really need to take an assessment of that um, because this has been, the, you know, being strung along has been uh, the, the path this entire time, this entire year. And so there's that part aside. But I think also, you know, as an institution, uh, it is important that the Senate, I think, step up in its governing culture. Uh, and I know that that may seem vague, but, you know, things that what what, for example, Joe and, and Meek and I just uh, discussed is that there are certain reforms that can be made within the culture of the Senate um, and decisions that are made it, within the Senate that can make it harder to do this and to make the environment harder to do this. It is not lost on me or I think many other members uh, of Congress that Joe Manchin had a conversation with the president, uh, you know, 48 hours before his announcement. The Senate adjourned on Friday, and then he waited until everyone was on vacation to say, no, I'm not going to vote for this. He waited until there was a moment of minimal pressure when he didn't have to go mm -hmm. back into the Senate, when, when all of this other thing, all of this stuff was happening. This is a very calculated timing. And if the Senate reconvenes, what that allows us to do, whether it's the Senate reconvening early, I believe uh, Senator Schumer just uh, just announced that they're going to at least have a, a special caucus. But it, when we reconvene and we say, no, 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 we are not going to let people play these games anymore because they are relying on norms of the old boys club. And we have to break those cultural norms that the Senate is, it is very entitled, very privileged, and very protected, and say we are not going to allow that deference to membership just because of the, the self-importance of the institution. We need to govern, and we are going to a actually have consequences. And the concern is that if there are no consequences to this kind of betrayal of working families across the country, of the president of the United States, of the party that one is a part of, then it encourages more egregious behavior like this, which will make it impossible to govern. So this is not just about a tit for tat. It's not a petty thing. This is about our ability to hold together a caucus because as was mentioned earlier, it is going to be harder for the president to come to, to the same folks that he asked their vote for, for the bipartisan infrastructure bill, where he promised that we will have Build Back Better before the end of the year. That, that ship seems to have sailed. And it will be very difficult to go back to those same people and make a promise again when that when a, such a huge, huge word was broken, because a lot of people took a risk in voting yes for that bipartisan infrastructure plan, because when you actually read the provisions, it is not it does not deliver all of the things. There are quite a few things that are troubling. But if we have passed Build Back Better, then, for example, on climate, we can we can have the drawdown that we need. But without it, 
we may have just passed, you know, uh, given away the climate opportunity of a generation, and we can't accept that.